Today on Woodman Web Training, we're going to work on general alarm functioning within the system and how you would go about keeping track of your alarms, troubleshooting the system, and just general day-to-day -day how you would use the alarms. So from our main summary screen, like you've seen many times in the past, we have our alarms tab over here on the right-hand side, or our alarm block showing critical, active, and unacknowledged alarms. Um, on a well-monitored system, this would be used daily. Uh, and used daily will give you a good insight into what parts of the system are having issues and not having issues. You've s just heard there's a, an alarm bell. You'll hear that going off and there's also an alarm console manager. So this screen that we're looking at here can be created and used in uh, any type of computer without having the whole control system involved. So you could have it set up, for example, a security guard station where we don't really want them looking at anything, but we may want them to be able to call somebody or make some sort of change or something like that. So looking at this, um, the first thing that it shows you is the date and time that the alarm has happened, its source state. So we really only have two things that are off normal right now. Everything else is alarms that have happened and then cleared. And then we can see whether they're acknowledged or unacknowledged. The source, the alarm class. Uh, the alarm class is, since it's a default alarm, it's not an emergency. It's just something, an event that happened that we wanted to keep track of. If it's critical, that's usually something that's critical and we really want to know about it. I don't have any critical alarms here now except for one we made up in a previous training class called Fan Off. Uh, that critical alarm is just showing that the fan has turned off. And then the message text, so however you have set up your alarm, or how we have set it up uh, straight from Woodman before you got it, alarm has returned to normal, or ping failure, ping success, those are usually due to controllers going on and offline. So if I was to log into this system daily, uh, you would only see a couple of alarms, or you could possibly see a lot of one thing, which would indicate uh, a failed piece of hardware or a failed piece of mechanical equipment. So let's look at one right here, existing furnace, critical alarm. There's been 15 unacknowledged alarms. So clicking on that, we can go in and see these are all the alarms that have happened, taken place, and they're not happening anymore. So since I know all those already took place, I know what happened. I created an alarm that is going into alarm every time the fan turns on and off at night. I can acknowledge these and you'll see the acknowledge pending and they will drop out of this database completely and all you're going to see in here for this uh, fan alarm is there's one unacknowledged alarm and that's the one that is active. Another item for in here is you can take notes on an alarm. So if there's a room temperature that you've been having trouble with and you want to keep track of what's been happening with it, you can add notes to that alarm. So right here, I already added one note calling this a test note, and this was a test alarm. Test alarm for training class. And we put that in there, and now we have a note. So whenever this alarm comes in, we should be able to click on it, and we can see whatever notes are in there. So we can just click on the notes, and they'll be running totals of what we've done to correct that. So if you have a room that has been hot and notoriously bad whenever someone leaves the coffee pot on or the refrigerator overheats or whatever the problem might be, you can keep track of it so the next guy that comes to look at this alarm can see the notes, see what's happened, see what kind of service steps and actions have been taken on that space. So what I would do daily is if they are unimportant alarms or things that have just happened and you know why, I would highlight them and acknowledge, and you'll see the acknowledge pending will be working in the background, and it'll acknowledge these alarms. It takes a few seconds. So we're going to acknowledge all of these. Now, for example, down here, I know some of these as we've been testing with our system, we've been knocking controllers on and offline within the office. So we have a bunch of unacknowledged alarms that they've gone on and offline. That is normal. I know what they are. I don't really need to make a note because it's not really that important to me. Whoops. So I'll hit acknowledge on those. These I know are just offline controllers we were testing. I'll acknowledge those. So we're down to just a couple of events. I've got one, a BCP Lawnworks and ECL 350 ping failed, which means that it's offline. Um, this is one I was programming, so I know it's not there anymore. It's actually out in the field. But this would be a good situation for something where you were having a problem with, and we would make a note and say, called Woodman,
So the next person that logs into the system and sees that, they're going to see that there was something going on with that, and they'll know that action has already been taken. We can acknowledge that alarm, but you'll see now it comes in with a little bit different color. And what we've done is we've done a force acknowledge. Uh, so we've forced this alarm to be acknowledged, um, saying that it's happened. We know it's happened, even though technically it's still an alarm because the device is not there. That is never going to clear because we're never going to put that controller back online. So we would do a force clear. And that forces the alarm to go back to normal, even though we know it never can. Same with this existing furnace. Uh, we could say force normal, but I know it's still online and it's still an issue. Uh, once we get that alarm taken out of there, we'll be able to clear that out. So now we've gone through, this would be the end of our day, or the end of our checking the alarms. We know we have critical one critical alarm. We know what it is. We still need to go fix the fan or whatever it is. Alarm history. Now we can go back and look at just today. So these would be all the alarms I had cleared and force cleared. So these ones are already cleared, already acknowledged, but they're still in here so I can look at it for past history. So I can look at it for the last seven days and I can see what alarms happened in the last seven days. Um, and then database maintenance would be the last thing. Since our system is set up to hold a total of 500 records, um, if I get a whole bunch of one, I may want to delete them or just increase the amount of records I'm allowed to keep. So I could clear all my old records, but really what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear old records before, and we're going to go with... Um, So in this case, I'm going to clear all records before, we're just going to select our date here. I want to clear all records before May 31st. Before selected. So we're going to select that. Run maintenance. Now this would also be a rolling system, so it would it would delete when you reached 500 records. It would just start uh, knocking off the oldest records to add the newest records, which is what this system has been doing for a long time. But you can see now you can hunt down your issues. You should see repeated alarms that one that has gone in and out of alarm multiple times. Uh, usually those are the ones that you need to go find, uh, track down, and see if there's a mechanical issue or a service issue that needs to be taken care of. So I hope this one's helpful. If you have any questions, please contact Woodman Controls. Thank you.